So on today's program, we have with us Freddie Peterson, who's the general manager of the Miami Beach Convention Center. Freddie, welcome. How are you? Great. I'm doing excellent, Jeff. I appreciate you uh, having me here today uh, and uh, looking forward to the chat. So thank you. Well, yeah, it's great to have you. Uh, now, you're, you're with the Miami Beach Convention Center in Miami. I hear it gets warm down there. Is that true or is that a fable? Um, yeah, it gets a, a little bit warm uh, during the months of uh, July and August, but, uh, you know, it's always a steady. You can always uh, 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 appreciate the sunshine that shines through every single day. Um, and, yeah, 80s. Um, Kind of can get a little bit uncomfortable at times, but for the most part, beautiful weather year round. Yeah, well, I'm jealous because we have rain here in Ohio today, so, but it's what it is. However, inside your facility, I bet the air conditioning works just fine. Always. That's, <laughs> that's that beautiful to be outdoors with the beautiful sunshine and obviously four blocks from the beach, but uh, you can always head indoors if you need to get that blast of cool air, so absolutely. Yeah. Well, let's talk about your convention center. Uh, tell us some highlights of it, you know, the size, the, the type of venues you have, and uh, what you have coming up. Yeah, sure. So a um, couple things. Um, six, uh, uh, $620 million uh, reimagined uh, venue. So it's now 1.4 million square feet of space. Uh, we like to say that we're the big diamond in the jewel box here. Uh, in uh, and on Miami Beach and in Miami, uh, we have over uh, just about 500,000 square feet of exhibition hall space, over 80 meeting rooms, five ballrooms, uh, really beautiful outdoor terraces, and then we also have about nine acres of uh, green space that actually surround the venue. So whether you want to be outdoors or indoors, uh, having that uh, capability to host the event and do different things as a part of the plug and play and what we provide here is really, really great. And then just outside in a, in a block away, we have obviously Lincoln Road. So a tremendous amount of restaurants, retail, shops, uh, a couple of performing arts venues, Jackie Gleason, uh, the Fillmore Theater, New World Symphony. And then as I said before, you know, you can't beat being three blocks or four blocks from, uh, from the ocean. So beautiful beaches here. Sounds like a fantastic place. So good for you that you have uh, that, that position there with the convention center. So let's talk about the GBAC star accreditation for facility program, which I know your facility applied for and went through the process and here you are, you've got it. So uh, why did you decide to invest in that? What was, what were some of the triggers that said, you know, we need to do this? I, I, so I think that as you kind of reflect and review uh, what you do internally and, and knowing that we were hit with the global pandemic and this being so new and I use the word fluidity and really not where, not knowing where to go and where to turn at times and, you know, heavily rely upon, you know, local government orders, the CDC, you know, and obviously using uh, PPE, you know, as we look to develop and maintain procedures, protocols, uh, and, you know, kind of supporting what we do on a daily basis, um, we started looking into the marketplace, quite frankly, to see what type of accreditation or what type of associations are out there that if we kind of um, up our game a little bit and on these cleaning procedures and policies, you know, what, what is in that marketplace? And, and obviously, as we started to do the research and really checking in with a lot of other venues and listening to our clients, uh, GBAC uh, accreditation uh, just kind of quickly rose to the top um, and is, you know, we all know it is the gold standard for uh, our public venues, so stadiums, arenas, performing arts venues, convention centers. I know a lot of different destinations, hotels, et cetera, are taking a look at it. So when we look at comprehensive uh, cleaning and, and disinfection, uh, disinfection protocols, uh, it was a natural. So adopting the GBAC programs and really supports um, our convention center. We like to say that uh, we're in a world-class destination with the first class venue being the Miami Beach Convention Center and having that gold standard, that GBAC accreditation just really continues to, to elevate our game. And quite frankly, uh, really, really uh, the right thing to do at the end of the day, for sure. That's right, so quite a partnership. Good, good comparison there. So for your staff and visitors, what does this mean for them? 
So I, I, it's a really good uh, uh, question. So, you know, we would always say in the venue side, it's always about safety and security. So you start to look at a global uh, pandemic and what does that all mean? So again, you tend to reevaluate yourself and your teams in the venue. And we, we kind of expand in that a little bit more. And it's really now about the health, safety, security, and well-being of the venue and all, the, of the, of all of those who actually enter the venue itself. So I, I think having uh, that look and that posture and really reflecting upon that, uh, having an objective third party, uh, you know, validation, uh, like a globally recognized institution like uh, ISSA's GBAC was a natural, um, you know, there's something to be said about reassuring our teams, because uh, I always say there's the back of the house function and the front of the house. If you have 1.4 million square feet, you know, you want to reassure your team that everything that we do day in and day out um, uh, not only instills confidence in, in the team members here, but also instills and restores confidence for our guests uh, when we either host or at some point when we host them back in. So incredibly important. So is this program something you see long term for you? I know we a lot of folks are looking at the pandemic as, of course, the current situation. But what, what about in coming years? Yeah, I think, you know, again, obviously reevaluating and, and relooking at what we do. Uh, we anticipate, um, you know, that ongoing investment. Um, if you look at it as, as a part of uh, being venue ready, so preparing, responding, and recovering for any type of incident. So we're used to, uh, you know, severe weather occurrences, uh, so man made and landscape events, et cetera. Uh, now that you drop in a global pandemic and you start to look at flu season, et cetera, uh, I think that investment into ISSA, uh, the GBAC accreditation is going to really carry forward uh, because, again, the deep cleaning, the protocols, the standards that are put in place, having that accreditation is just really, really important. Now, when you started the process of becoming accredited, there were 20 elements to, to learn study and comply with. Did any of those stand out as more challenging than others? No, I, I wouldn't use the word challenge so much. It's more of an opportunity to kind of look at those 20 elements and again, do an evaluation uh, to see what, what, what works with our teams. Um, I think it's really maintaining and striking that balance between the green initiatives that we've deployed here and then the housekeeping protocols. So just making sure that uh, we looked at everything openly and transparently as to what we have across the board. And then again, you know, maintaining that health of the venue and our teams and all who enter it, you know, having that as the priority was incredibly important. So, um, you know, I, I don't think there was that one thing as a part of the 20 elements. Uh, and again, I use the word opportunity. I don't like to words, use the word challenge. But having that opportunity to kind of explore that a little bit more and dig into it with, with our teams uh, was really a, a great experience. We'll just, we'll just not worry about that word challenge at all. So no. I, I like that. Opportunities. All right. Opportunity. Was there something that was part of the GBAC accreditation process you found easy to implement? So I, it, it's an interesting question to ask because a lot of what we say daily here is, you know, um, everything starts at home. What you do at home carries forward into the venue. And, and a, a lot of, all of our teams treat this venue as their home. So when you talk about uh, the cleaning, the disinfection procedures, uh, when, the, you know, when you're at the supermarket, what you buy off the shelves um, and, and the products that you use and, and how you clean your home, it was really a, a common sense approach um, and just really kind of real world practicality. Uh, so Again, taking what you do at home and deploying it inside the venue made it easy. And then conversely, the same, everything that you're learning inside the venue with GBAC and everything else, being able to, to bring that back into your home uh, does make that difference. So if you can really take these health and safety practices and, and, and again, what you learn in the workplace and bring that home, just creates a, a, a much healthier community for all of us collectively. So whether it's COVID-19 and this uh, global pandemic that we're under, or just even the annual flu or anything else that we're dealing with, 
to have a cleaner environment and a healthier environment just makes us much more healthy all around. With, with what you're doing, is there anything you're doing differently because of GVAXR accreditation that you're going to continue on in the future? Um, you want to keep it as simple as possible for your teams. So having those policies and protocols in place, continue to educate our teams and our clients is really important. Uh, so having that accreditation and then actually taking a look at and evaluating uh, our equipment, our supply chains, um, you know, the products that are in the marketplace is, is incredibly important. So again, there's gonna be that new norm uh, that, that, that is gonna be instilled here. Um, and you know, we're used to having uh, the cleaning teams do their thing and people just get it used to it when you're in these spaces, but really putting them that much more in the spotlight and really talking about the importance of what they do at the end of the day is really, really a great story to tell. It's great for the teams and it's great for those who come here again, having that confidence in what we're doing. Good. My last question is this. So in your networking with other managers like yourself, conventions or event facilities, if they were to say, Freddie, should we do GBAXR accreditation, what would you tell them? I would highly recommend it. Um, again, it instills that confidence um, amongst the teams, um, our clients coming to, into the building. Um, and like I said, it's the gold standard. Um, it's great to have that third party independent review and it makes the team that much stronger uh, across the board with the space that we have. Um, and then obviously our contract partners that come into the building as well, general service contractors, AV providers, uh, third party planners, uh, for them to be a part of that and someone understand that, again, restoring confidence, confidence is so key here. Uh, it just, it, it's, it's the right way to go. Absolutely, right. 1000 percent. Well, Freddie, we'll let you get back to that Florida sunshine and yeah. we appreciate your time today. All right, Jeff, thank you so much. Appreciate the time and I appreciate everything that ISSA and GBAC is doing for, for our community, our venues, and uh, the public. So thank you.